Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about polar covalent bonds. When we have bonding between atoms, the polarity of that bond can change dramatically depending on the nature of the two different atoms on each side. So let's take a look at polar covalent bonds. We use the term electronegativity to uh, refer to the uh, nature of a particular atom. The more or less electronegative it is, depends on its ability to attract electrons towards it. And there, in the trend on the periodic table is that if you go further to the right and further up on the periodic table, the elements become more electronegative. They pull tighter on the electrons and they attract electrons more. This has an impact in the polarization of molecules and in particular covalent bonds when we make those elements into molecules and bond them with other elements. So an electronegative element attracts electrons. Uh, we often use the term electropositive to refer to atoms that give up or, or don't hold on to electrons very strongly and release them for other atoms to pull towards them. Now we're not talking about transferring electrons from one atom to another in the oxidation or reduction stage, but we're talking about covalent bonds where the electrons are shifted in density or more chances of being found closer to the more electronegative element. There's a scale that we talk about to refer to electronegativity and here you can see the Pauling electronegativity scale for some of the elements. Um, the elements on the left of the periodic table are all things that easily form cations so they don't hold on to electrons very well so they're low on the electronegativity scale whereas those atoms that are further to the right and further up on the periodic table, fluorine being the most electronegative, uh, would be pulling on electrons greatest and holding them the tightest. So in general, um, when we have covalent bonds between atoms of the same electronegativity, they're each equally pulling on the electrons in that bond in equal amount. So that means that the bond, the covalent bond, is not polar. It's a nonpolar bonds and the molecules are not polarized molecules. For example, these here, diatomic hydrogen, H2, would be a nonpolar molecule. They're equally distributed electrons within the covalent bond between them. Cl2 and O2, oxygen, these again have equally distributed electron density in the bond between them because they are both pulling on those electrons or have the same attractiveness to the electrons in equal amounts. What happens when you bond atoms together that are of different electronegativities is that you now have the electrons closer to the more electronegative atom. That is, the bond becomes polarized and that leads to polar molecules. So in the HF molecule, for example, um, fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, so the molecule has more electron density around the fluorine than the hydrogen. It polarizes the molecule, and within the covalent bond, we see that hydrogen is more positive end, fluorine is more negative end. That is, the bond electron density is shifted. We represent that polarity by an arrow, and you can see that arrow, the blue arrow has a little line through it, indicating like a little plus charge. So from plus on one end towards the electronegative atom that's attracting the electrons. If you think about a water molecule, the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen, so the two bonds are being uh, polarized towards the oxygen rather than towards the hydrogens. And in carbon dioxide, it's opposite. The oxygens are more electronegative than carbon, so there's more electron density out on the ends. So those two uh, bonding situations between carbon and oxygen are shifted from the positively charged carbon to the negatively charged oxygen. We use the terms partial positive or partial negative. That's that little small delta sign, meaning partially positive, partially negative, to indicate that it's not a full negative or full positive charge. It's just polarized. But it's useful to think in these terms to think about where reactivity happens because reactivity in chemical reactions happens from negatively charged electrons to positively charged sites of a molecule. This gives you a little bit of information about the electrostatic map. Again, this is an example showing HF and you can see the hydrogen end is more positive indicated by the blue. 
Uh, the negative side is more red around the fluorine, and it's also greater in size. So when we think about the range of that electron density, it's um, a little bit more distributed out uh, because it's, there, it's greater over on that end. And uh, the term that we use to talk about uh, this polarization of bonds is referred to as the inductive effect. Inductive effect. The shifting of electrons in a bond in response to the electronegativity of atoms nearby. So when we talk about truly ionic or true or covalent bonds, it's kind of a gray area. Um, an ionic bond means that the electron from one atom has been completely transferred to, electro to the other atom and you have a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion with no sharing of electrons between them and um, uh, an electron pair electrostatic attraction that holds it together. As you move to the left on this uh, scale, the, as you share electrons, then what you're doing is forming covalent bonds. Um, but those covalent bonds can have a whole range of polarities depending on how different the electronegativities of the atoms are. And a general rule of thumb is that if the difference in the electronegativities of the two atoms is greater than two on the Pauling electronegativity scale, it's considered to be an ionic bond. And if the difference in electronegativity is less than two, then we would think about those more like covalent bonds. Uh, but keep in mind there's a whole a gray area in the middle on bonding of uh, molecules in terms of covalent bonds. From all the way nonpolar on the left to polar covalent to completely ionic on the right.